to Go Live TV, the future in your hands. The only multicultural IPTV station that brings communities together. Over 2.7 million people have already watched. Go Live TV, anytime, anywhere. If you hold too tight to your past, you have no heart to hold your future. In any way, you're going to stray like the prodigal son. What I'm saying now, please come back to yourself and take a step of faith. It is not yet over until it's over. The door is open. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Beloved all over the world, watching and listening, I welcome you to another wonderful day that the Lord has made. A day that salvation is coming to you live and direct. This day, I welcome you on behalf of Christ's Chosen Church of God worldwide, Canada Axis, to this great hour of salvation. On behalf of our spiritual father, the leader of this church, Senior Apostle Dr. Nwefe Huiwu, I say God bless you. And of course, heaven is attending to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. A word of prayer, Father, it is not by power nor by mind. I've come to present your word to the world that you have created. I ask, O oh Lord, let today Salvation indeed, locate every man, woman, or child that is listening and watching all over the world. I pray that you use me and not me using myself. I hide myself behind the cross, O oh Lord. And I ask and pray that let every word of my mouth and the meditations of my heart today be acceptable to the hearers. At the end of this day, salvation indeed will locate everyone and joy and happiness will be our portion and glory be to your name in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a message that you look and leave. It's recorded in His Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and leave. Look and live, my brothers live. Look to Jesus now and live. Life is given unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Beloved, the word said there, life and light comes from the word of God. The word of God is the word that is protocol breaking and mountain moving. And indeed, as you hear today, every form of protocol that is not meant to be in your life will be broken in Jesus' name. And any form of anything representing mountain in your life, this word that you hear today will make sure such mountains are moved to the glory of God in Jesus' name. And so, I'm going to be talking on a topic I've titled, Obstacles to Attaining Final Decision. Obstacles to at obtain Attaining Final Decision. In other words, things that can truncate your God-divine destination. Things that can truncate your God-given destiny. Obstacles to Attaining Final Destination. Hallelujah. Beloved, the life that we live is a journey. Life is a journey. The journey that subsequently has a destination. Amen. Life is a journey. Indeed, no man created on this earth was just created ordinarily. Every man under the sun created to have a destiny. Created with a plan of God. That is why to attain such destiny is a journey we must embark on. And embarking on that destiny, on that journey, has obstacles that if you are not watchful, those obstacles will truncate 
will stop you from getting to your final destination, which is your destiny that God has given. Amen. Amen. God, in creation, beloved, created mankind equally. Hallelujah. God was not partial in creation. God did not create, oh, because this is black and white, let me do it that way. No. God is colorless indeed. God was not partial in creation. So he gave all mankind equal life. That's why he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Hallelujah. And when God created everyone equally, he gave equal life and he gave equal destination. Amen. Without partiality, God created every man equally and gave us equal destination. Indeed, in creation, God created us with divine and glorious destiny. And that destiny is the destination you must journey towards to attain and to achieve. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, I know my plans for you, the plans of good and not of evil. Beloved, right from creation, God gave you a destination. He gave you a destiny to attain. And the destiny of God and destination of God for you and I is to live a good life, a life full of purity, a life full of enjoyment, not endearment, a life full of, you know, of good plans, a life voided of disaster, a life voided of any form of struggle or pain. That is the destination God created for you and I. Genesis 1, 26, I read. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, listen, one of the destiny, one of the destination God created you and I for is that he said, be fruitful and multiply. Hallelujah. God was not partial in granting any man such destiny. The destiny to be fruitful. The destiny to procreate. The destiny to have physical, spiritual, body, and all sorts of fruitfulness. To multiply. To be fruitful. To increase your world. To increase your life. is a destiny God created every man to have. And he said, fill the earth and subdue it. My God. God gave us such glorious destination. Go, I have created you with this. Go and enjoy the world that I have created for you. Go and live large. Go and live in peace. Go and live gloriously. Go and live favorably. God did not create anyone to labor. The intention of God was to live a life of favor. But it was not, in the beginning, as you know, it was not so. God created us for favor. But labor hit us. That was not the plan of God. He said to have dominion. Beloved, to be a dominator of your world. That's the destiny God has created you and I. That's the destination God said you should have. To dominate your world. To dominate physically. To dominate everything and everything around you. You are given that power. You are created to be a dominion. To be a dominion. To dominate hardship, to dominate failure, to dominate hard life, to dominate any threat to your life, to dominate any threat to your spiritual living, to dominate lack and want. That is the destination God created for mankind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God did not just stop there. He said, God even went as much as granting mankind the opportunity to have a life of freedom, a life to choose, a life to choose between good and evil, a life to choose between death and life. He said in Deuteronomy 30, 19, Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Hallelujah. God is not a God that forces anyone to do anything because he created you and said my son my daughter 
I've given you this destination. I've given you this destiny. Have a life to live freely. Have a life to make choices. You have the life. You have the opportunity. You have the grace to choose between good and evil. You have the grace to choose between death and hell. You have the grace between, to choose between blessing and curses. But God, in his own loving kindness, said, My son, my daughter, I've given you this choice, but I wish you that you choose life instead of death. Amen. But what would he see, beloved? Our God who is a God indeed. Our God who has no evil in his bones. Our God who has given us the life to live fulfillment. Our God who has given us the choice to live in good head. Our God who has given us everything to live in peace and security. Our God who has given us a life that is free of war and terrorism. Our God who has given us the final destination that said, if you follow me well, the final destination is salvation of life. That you live a life of God here and you come and enjoy with me in future in eternity. That same God is the one that gave us that wonderful and glorious destination. But what do we see around us below? Most persons, most creation, still go outside all this greatness of God for us and do everything not to still attain final destination. God has given us the grace. He has equipped us to do this journey of getting to that final destination. But you still find some of us, you know, doing things to deviate from the roadmap, to deviate from the ways that will lead us to the final destination. And one of the things that really can truncate men from making final destination is number one, sin. Hallelujah. Sin, beloved, is when you are holding on to the property of the devil. Sin is when you are living a life of evil. When you remove thee from devil, it still means evil. When you are living a life of evil, a life of corruption, a life of unfaithfulness, a life of just being bad, you are living in sin. And any man living in sin, beloved, can never find his or her way through that journey of life to attain the final destination. Because sin leads to death. Sin leads to destruction. A life of sin leads to, 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 to drawback and setbacks. The scripture said in Proverbs 14, 34, it said, righteousness exhausts a nation, but sin is a reproach. Beloved, sin cannot be underrated. Sin cannot be underestimated. Sin is a killer. Sin is a truncator of destiny. Sin will never make you see the right way to make your way to that final destination. So, beloved, a life of sin is a killer. A life of sin will never make any man, any woman lead a life of fulfilling destiny. Hallelujah. Another matter, another obstacle to fulfilling or getting to that final destination is when you have misplaced focus and holding on to the past. Amen. Remember, beloved, God has given us a glorious destiny. God has given us the, 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 the destiny to dominate, to be fruitful, to, to replenish the earth, the destiny to make good choices. But what do we see? Instead of persons focusing and understanding how to achieve that goal, understanding how to journey through that path to make sure you get to your destination, you begin to focus on things that will not help you. The Bible said, study to show yourself approved. A workman rightly dividing the word of truth. That is Timothy. Look, beloved, what do we see? When you have a destiny to achieve, when you have a goal to meet, you are supposed to understand the intricacies, 
You are supposed to understand the know-how of achieving that goal. You have a business to achieve. You have a business to meet up with. You are supposed to understand, study what will make you a success in that business. What do we see people do? Instead of studying the business, the scripture said, Gain wisdom is the principal thing. In getting wisdom, get understanding. You are supposed to understand, study, get wisdom. Those that dominate the world, beloved, they are those with wisdom. Those that make the difference in the world, they are those with wisdom. So in your goal getting, you are supposed to understand, sort out wisdom, and understand the, 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 the destiny you are pursuing. Understand the goal you are pursuing so that you become the master in it. But what we see people do nowadays, instead of focusing on and understanding the business, they begin to rely on men. They begin to depend on, on handout. They begin to depend on handout. They begin to depend on people that can give you fish instead of you becoming a fisherman. When you begin to get fish every day, I tell you, the giver of that fish will get tired and you will be wiped out. But it is better to study, to understand. Get your priorities right. Don't put your priority on, or, or focus on men, but focus on understanding and gaining wisdom that will make you a master of your world. Because it's better to be a fisherman than rather to be a getter of fish daily. Whoever is giving you fish daily will get tired. It's better you become a fisherman that you too become a blessing to your world. Hallelujah. Some persons, instead of hold, going forward, they begin to hold on to the past. They begin to depend on the past. Beloved, every day we are given 24 hours. If you miss today's 24 hours, you cannot relieve it tomorrow. You cannot carry forward 24 hours. It's better you spend it well. Spend it well. Don't hold on to your past. Don't begin to look at past failures. Don't begin to look at past disappointments. Look forward. The scripture said, Apostle Paul said, I look forward, press forward to a mark of a high calling. Let the past be past. You can refer to the past, but don't do it in the past. There are examples of men of God, of people of this, our generation, of our world, that did not allow the past to disturb them. If they had dwelled on the past, I tell you, we will not be enjoying the peace and the future we have now. Example, Abraham Lincoln, one of the American presidents. Abraham Lincoln, we know and it was said that he had a lot of failures in lives, even on his way to become a president. He failed in business. He failed in every effort to become a president. He did not give up. He did not let that failure of the past disturb him. But today, Abraham Lincoln can be referred to as one of the greatest American presidents that ever lived because he did not hold on to the past. He, hold, he, he referred to the past, but kept looking to the future. And the future is what brought him to become the greatest president you can tell. Another one great achiever we can remember is the inventor of the light bulb in the person of Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, for years, before inventing this light bulb that we are enjoying today, he made over 10,000 experiments to try it, and he failed. And what was his answer? He said, I did not fail 10,000 times. I only knew how to do the business 10,000 times. Hallelujah. He did not allow the failure of the past to hold him back. He looked forward and said, from these past failures, I tap into it and produce a great future. And that is why we can today enjoy the board that we are enjoying. If Thomas Edison did not press forward and dwell in the past, Today, we we'll all remain in darkness physically. But thank God for persons like those that did not dwell in the past. So, beloved, I want to encourage you. Do not hold on to the past. Because a great sayer said, if you hold on to the past, you will not have any hands to hold your future. That is the place that I want you to locate and want to be encouraged on. Third reason why, planning, why the future can be truncated is when you are planning outside the planner. Outside the planner. It's God Almighty that created you in his own image and gave you a greatest destination. And now you are expected, if you want to gain and achieve that destination, 
If you want to make sure your journey is smooth and able, you are expected to refer back to the planner, the one that planned your life. If you plan without the planner, you are planning to fail. Hallelujah. Our God is the creator that was never created, beloved. Our God is the God of all flesh. Nothing difficult for him to do. Do you know God is the creator of even principalities and powers? So when you are doing anything outside this God, you are planning to fail. Hallelujah. I want to encourage us today, beloved, that the only way, the only way, the only route that you can, you know, you can journey properly without obstacles disturbing you or truncating your, 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 your achievement of your destination is when you allow Jesus Christ and let him into your world. It's only Jesus Christ, it's only the experience of Jesus Christ, it's only the allowance of Jesus Christ, it's only the acceptance of Jesus Christ that can help you to, to, to navigate any of these obstacles that will truncate your destiny. Hallelujah. Example, we take example from the, the, the Jesus disciples when they were going, crossing over to the other side. We see that story in Mark 4, 35 to 41. When they were crossing over to the other side in a, in a ship, heavy sea, then a storm came to almost truncate their destination. You remember the story? A heavy storm beat upon the boat. But until they realized that Jesus Christ was on the boat, that was when their journey was able to get to the final destination. When they cried out, Jesus, carry that not, that will perish. And Jesus rose up and said, Peace be still. So I pray for somebody today. Any storm of life, any visitor of life that will want to truncate your destiny, they want to truncate you getting you to your final destination. As Jesus stilled that storm, I speak as the oracle of God. Every stormy situation in your life, receive peace now in the name of Jesus Christ. It's only when Jesus got in the boat that the storm ceased. So I pray for you. Let Jesus be in your life boat today. Let Jesus be in your life boat today. Because with Jesus in your boat, with Jesus in every home, there is happy, happy home. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and every and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. Beloved, the only way to navigate the storms, the obstacles that, to, that, will, that, will, that will truncate your destiny, your God-given destiny. So please, accept God in your life. Serve him well so that your life will be well. Wherever you are listening to me for, from or hearing me or seeing me, please let God, let God be your ultimate. Let's serve in God. Let's focus in on God. Let's focus in on Jesus Christ. Be your ultimate, ultimate from today. Because it's only by seeking him first that he will put you to first places. When you seek God first, when you serve him well, I tell you every other thing, good health, long life, favor, peace of life, will be your portion. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. My beloved, don't again look unto man for help. Don't again look unto man for help. Your destiny is in your hand, but your destiny is controlled by the creator that was never created. If you want to fulfill destiny, if you want to get to that final destination, please stop looking to man. But look unto God, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Beloved, I want to encourage you watching me now. Accept Jesus in your boat. Accept Jesus in your life. You that is ravaged by drug, hard drugs. Yes, it's a lifestyle that unfortunately is common and is being, it's ravaging the world. I want you to listen to me. You that is looking for salvation. You that is in a life of criminality, I beg of you, listen to me and listen well. Let Jesus enter your boat. Let Jesus enter your life. Let Jesus bring that salvation to you. Because without Jesus in your life, beloved, life will become empty. Without Jesus in your life, beloved, life will become useless. Without Jesus in your life, the end is detriment. The end 
is disaster. I pray for somebody that is listening to me. I decree the grace to locate Jesus, the grace to accept Jesus, the grace to walk in the steps of Jesus, the grace to open your word, the boat of your word. Let Jesus enter in, locate you right now, locate you right now. I pray, joining my faith with the world, with, with heaven, to say, today, salvation must locate you. Salvation must locate you. Salvation must locate you. Beloved, I've said what I know God has sent to you. Your word from today will not know any other thing that salvation, that great destination. Your word from today will begin to receive the powerful hand of God that will bring grace and life and salvation to you. Please do not avoid or forsake the congregation of the saints. It's very important. As you have heard from me, as you have heard from God, please locate any Bible-believing church around you. But of course, if you are in the Canada axis, here we are, Christ's choosing church of God worldwide. We have our branches in Mississauga, we have our branches in Toronto. And more branches springing up all over the place. Locate us. Come and meet with God. Come and let God direct you to that, your final destination. That your life will move from story to glory and from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Beloved, Jesus knows the way through the wilderness. Jesus knows the way through the wilderness. All we have to do is to follow. He knows the way through the wilderness. All we have to do is to follow. Bless you, beloved. Until we meet same time next week, remain rapturable in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. It is well with you. Bye. If you hold too tight to your past, you have no hand to hold your future. In any way, you're going to stray like the prodigal son. What I'm saying now, please come back to yourself and take a step of faith. It is not yet over until it's over. The door is open. This is our family. This is our life. And we are Leo.